Fred, I am really starting to get worried. Babe. Are you okay? All my messages just got delivered. Fred, it's pretty late already, but a big part of me still thinks you are coming home. You said your flight was for 3 p.m. You even texted me that you were about to take off. You should have been home since 6 p.m. Babe. Can you say something else other than babe? Dad's burial is in two days. You promised to be here. I really need you by my side during this difficult phase. You've been on your business trip for two weeks. It's really been difficult dealing with Dad's death alone. Yeah, I sincerely understand. Um, I... I really don't know how to say this, but... I am sorry. Okay, you are sorry about... Look, Vanya, I, I lied. The company didn't approve my three-day leave. I'm still on the business trip. Aren't you gonna say anything? Don't tell me you're crying. You know how much I hate it, don't you? Well, if you haven't noticed, I haven't been getting worked up about your actions lately. I mean, ever since Dad's death, you have become a completely different person. I'm not really surprised that you lied. After all, that's what you have been doing lately. Vanya, let's not do this. I haven't told you a single lie since your dad passed. And what about telling me that you were on a plane when you weren't? What's that called? The truth? Oh, um... I was scared, Vanya. I was still hoping they would let me go. I, I am sorry. Don't ever forget that your happiness means so much to me. I, I will never take it for granted. It's late now. You should get some sleep. Talk to you later. You are unbelievable. My fingers are actually trembling while typing this. Okay, I think I've had enough of your drama. What's all this about? Fred, you are back in town. My friend saw you a few minutes ago at our favorite restaurant. We just finished Dad's funeral an hour ago. How could you be in town and not attend? I am dying for an explanation. And your friend didn't think she should have approached me to ask for an explanation before calling you and running her mouth? It's that prissy girl, right? That nosy behavior of hers is why she'll never find a man. Stay on the topic. Okay, I know this is going to sound very lame, but I did it for you. You don't know how many sacrifices I made for you in the past 24 hours. It really hurts me. There you go again. Tell me about these sacrifices that hurts me and make me feel unwanted. Vanya, I wanted to surprise you. They finally allowed me to leave. I flew in last night. I know the burial was for 9 a.m., but guess when I woke up? 11 a.m. I know the funeral would have ended already. I didn't like the complimentary breakfast being served, so I went to the restaurant. Don't tell me you're thinking I was with another woman. Well, that won't be out of place. Wow. You know how hurt I was when I woke up and looked at the time? I really don't deserve this reaction I'm getting from you. Do you need some space? What? Well, ever since your dad passed away, you've been very paranoid. Maybe you're scared that you're gonna lose your loved ones. It was cute at first, but now it's scary. I really hate it when my partner doesn't trust me. See, this may seem harsh, but I think you need space. You need some time alone to clear your head. I really want to see you, but we don't need to right now. Once again, I'm making another sacrifice that won't be appreciated. I am actually speechless. Same here. Please, take care of yourself. You're heavily on my mind. What was that funny WhatsApp update you made about how secretive wives can be very annoying? Talk about feeling guilty. Why didn't you say anything about your dad's inheritance? I know you got your share already. Really? This is what this is about? You got your share three days ago. I've been asking for updates from your uncle, and he told me. So why didn't you tell me? I'm sure you have ulterior motives. Ulterior motives? Really? You haven't been home in a week. You haven't spoken to me in a... I was giving you space. I never asked for one. I didn't think such a matter would be discussed over the phone. Blah, blah, blah. You didn't tell me because you don't trust me. And this is exactly why I need you to take a step back and do some deep reflection. I don't want to lose you. It was all in your head. I don't know why you were doing all this, but I can't wait to find out. So, what are you going to do with the inheritance money? What else? I will invest in stocks. I don't need to do anything with the money. 
Actually, it's my retirement fund. Your retirement fund? What about me? Whoa, I'm surprised you were asking that. We will both put the money to good use when it's time. We are both earning well, so we don't need to touch the money. I don't know what you're talking about, but can I get my share? Huh? Yes, what do you think about a Bugatti Chiron Super Sport? What? Are you crazy? That's over three million. Smart girl. That's about half the share of the inheritance, right? So let me have mine. Let you have yours? No way I'm letting you use half of my inheritance to buy a car. You're doing it again, Vanya. Doing what? The only reason you're refusing is because you don't believe me. Perhaps you think once I have the money, I'll run off with some other woman? Can you just stop all these annoying accusations? Jeez, it's becoming very frustrating. You know what? I think I may have been wrong by suggesting you take a break from me. This space is only doing more harm than good. Hmm. It's just... Okay, what about a dinner date? Let's talk things out. Let's have the dinner date in three days. Before then, let's make good use of the time before us. Reflect on your attitude towards me and I'll do the same. I really think you are the one who needs to do all the reflection. Good night. You're leaving just like that? Vanya? This is what I'm talking about. Vanya! I know we haven't spoken in three days, but I am in the restaurant, ready for our date as we agreed. I am a little timid to say this, but I miss you. Shit, I said it. LOL. It's almost 8 p.m. Dying to see you, Daddy. Hey, I don't want you thinking I'm being paranoid or something, but. It's 8.30 already. Where are you? You know what? Think whatever you wanna, but I am really starting to think you aren't going to show up. Fred. Frederick Anderson. You little devil. I got a notification from City Hall this morning saying our divorce has kicked off. I rushed down there and found out you personally signed the divorce papers. Well, looks like my little secret is out. Your little secret? I'm not sure what's going on here, but you need to spill it out. Yeah, right. Time to stop being nice, then. We're getting divorced. Just out of the blue? Fred, you went as far as forging my signature just to get the divorce approved. The signature was the easiest part. Do you remember those moments when, out of sheer boredom, you taught me how to replicate your signature? I used to find it quite annoying then. <laughs> I can't believe it finally came in handy. God. For the past few weeks, you've been going on and on about how you want our marriage to work. How you would do anything to make me happy. Um, well, let's just call that a little acting. Have you ever fallen out of love before? What does that have to do with this? Everything, sweetie. I fell out of love with you. The funniest part? I don't even know why. <laughs> These things happen. But if it makes you feel any better, see me as a jerk, a simpleton. You don't deserve me. You deserve a better man. Besides, you don't trust me anymore and you weren't going to give me any of your inheritance money. Now you are talking. This is all about the inheritance money, right? Yes. Did you think I would let you take it all? Not now, not ever, not even in my next life. So my plan is simple. Divorce you and get half of your inheritance. On what planet does that fly? I thought you were smart. Don't you know how divorce settlements work? Usually they involve splitting the assets, including the inheritance. You are the dumb one here. Inheritances are seen as personal property and aren't usually divided like marital assets. That's what you think? Get ready for the biggest shock of your life then. I'll contact my lawyer shortly and he'll discuss my share of the inheritance with you. Get your paperwork ready. It's about to get really dirty. Wow. You already have everything planned out. Now I understand why you have been avoiding me. You could have been a real man and tell me your true intentions, rather than subjecting me to such emotional torture. Well, I'm doing all that now. I can't deal with all this alone right now. I'll go over to my aunt's place. We'll be there for a few days. Have a nice time there. OMG, what happened here? For a moment I thought I was in the wrong house. Oh, you're finally back home. Well, I left some hours ago. I came to pick up a few things. Why is the whole house littered with food and empty cans? What did you do here? What does it look like? I brought a few friends over to celebrate. Celebrate what? 
We're getting divorced and I'm very close to taking half of your inheritance. Don't you think it calls for celebration? Wow. I can't believe you were actually excited about this. I have spent the past few days crying my eyes out. Oh dear. I already told you to see me as the bad guy here. See, this is an opportunity for you to meet someone better. Someone more responsible. I thought you were all that. Vanya, people change. I am not going to stay here and listen to the crap you have to say. Whatever. Vanya, are you there? Something urgent came up. We need to talk. Sure. The only thing I want to talk about is the divorce proceedings. Vanya, do you still love me? Huh? I know this may sound very stupid, but uh, the, thing, the thing is, I've been stressed lately. Clearly, everything I've said these past few weeks wasn't out of a sound mind. Can you go straight to the point? Vanya, I was out of my mind when I filed for the divorce. You know I would never feel complete without you. I used to feel that way too, but after you announced the divorce and left me to deal with the heartbreak alone, I realized I could be happier without you. Just like you said, I deserve someone better. You deserve me! See, about the inheritance, I'm ready to reason with you. Let's keep it as our retirement fund. We can buy a mansion close to the seaside and travel the world. Perfect idea. But I will do all that with someone else. I really need to go now. Vanya, wait! The lawyer pointed out that I might not be entitled to your inheritance money. He also clearly stated that the fact that I forged your signature could land me in big trouble. Glad you finally realized that. Got to go. Wait, Vanya, I thought I would get half the money, so I went ahead and made a big purchase. A brand new expensive car. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. Stop being sarcastic, Vanya. You know without the inheritance money, I don't have enough funds to cover the car. If we go through with a divorce, we'll split our assets equally. I would also have to pay alimony as well. Things are really going to get tough for me. Vanya, you... Never wanted the divorce, right? It, it's, it's not too late. Let's stop now. Yes, I never wanted it. It never crossed my mind for a day. But right now, I am itching to be your ex-wife. I am out of your DM. Fania, it's not too late to stop the divorce proceedings. I haven't been able to sleep a wink. I can't get you out of my mind. I, I need you. I'm not sure you understand how much you broke me. I thought I was going to die from heartbreak. But then, one morning, I woke up and realized I could be fine without you. Let's talk about you forging my signature. Do you know how serious that crime is? I know. I, I know, baby. It could land you in jail, but I won't go that route. You have two options. Give me 70% of your assets or end up in jail. Vanya, we don't have to do this. Remember how much you love me? Remember how you promised you would never hurt or betray me? Yes, we made that promise years ago, and you broke it first. We can still fix this, Vanya, I promise. Nah. The only reason you are back is because your plans failed. You even threw that silly party to celebrate. I am sorry, Vanya. Well, I am not the only one you should be apologizing to. Huh? You will need to apologize to our unborn baby when she arrives. I found out I am a few weeks pregnant some days ago. Gracious God, v Vanya, we need each other now more than ever. We need to stay together for our baby. LOL, you sound very funny. You said you are no longer in love with me, right? My baby deserves a father who loves her mother. She deserves a father who would think twice before making rash decisions. You betrayed me once, Fred. You would do it again. See you in court. Get ready to pay alimony and child support. Don't do this to us, Vanya. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm on my knees. I'm sorry. Fred kept trying to reach out, but I could never forgive someone who prioritized money over me. As for the car he got, he had to return it. He is a mess right now, struggling to pay alimony. I welcomed a beautiful baby girl some months ago so he is also struggling to pay child support. I never thought about leaving him, but right now, I don't regret my decision. Hey Maria, it's been a while since we last talked, huh? I have something I want to ask you. Franny, how have you been? It's good to hear from you after all these years. What's up? 
This may come a surprise, but I'm married! For real? Congratulations! Thanks. We're just legally married for now. We haven't had our wedding yet. The ceremony and reception is next Saturday. Next Saturday? I had no idea. You should have mentioned something earlier. I know. I'm really sorry for the rush. But I'd love for you to come. Do you think you can make it? You're inviting me? A week before the reception? Yeah, I know it's really short notice, but I really would like you to come. So will you? Well, thank you for the invitation. I'm truly happy for you. But I'm busy next Saturday. Oh, I wish I could go, but I can't. I would have loved to see you and your husband. I understand. It's just... I would really love it if you were there for me on my big day. Is there any way you can rearrange your plans? Actually, I'm getting married as well. My fiancé and I arranged a dinner for my parents and his parents to meet. I can't believe you're getting married too, Maria. Though, I find it strange I knew nothing about it until now. Anyhow, congratulations to you as well. Thank you. You understand how hectic life becomes when planning a wedding. It's hard to find time to catch up with old friends. I really am sorry I won't be able to attend your wedding. No, I'm the one who should be apologizing for not letting you know earlier. But if it's only a dinner between families, can't you do it on another day? It doesn't have to be next Saturday. His parents are really busy, and it would be rude to change the date that we set up over a month ago. It's just a dinner, though, right? They shouldn't have any problems with changing the date. I wish it were that simple. They're actually flying in from Maine. They're coming to New York just to meet me and my family. Rescheduling the dinner would mean they'd have to reschedule their flight and hotel. It's way too short notice to do that. Plus, there's cancellation fees for doing that. But it's not like they're here already and you're canceling. It should be fine. It won't be fine. I'm sorry, but I told you it's too much to cancel now. Well, they aren't staying for just one night, are they? Why don't you just reschedule for lunch on Sunday? That would be perfect. Have you forgotten that we've been BFFs since high school? Doesn't my happiness count for anything? Don't say that. My fiancé and his family are important to me. I don't want to ask them to change our plans. They may get the wrong impression about me. I'm really sorry, Franny, but please, let it go. Seriously? Are you that scared of your fiancé or his family? Are they monsters? It seems like your new family is going to be super stressful for you. Why are you jumping to conclusions? I know I wouldn't be happy if someone changed the date of an important dinner a week before. That's just inconsiderate. And I've been looking forward to meeting them as well. We're going to be family. I want to start on the right foot. You know, from my end, what you are saying sounds really rude to me. It sounds to me like you don't want to come to my wedding. Have you stopped to think about how this is making me feel? I don't think what I'm saying is that crazy. Like I said, I really wanted to be there, but there's no way I can change these plans. Is it my fault you told me on such short notice? If you really wanted to be there, you should have asked me sooner. I've already apologized more than I should have. I'm begging you to come. I don't want any empty seats at the reception. It's giving me so much anxiety. That has nothing to do with me or my plans, right? If you had invited me a month ago, my fiancé and I may have been able to change the date. But I've never been invited to a wedding this last minute. Why did you decide to have your wedding so quickly? I know, it's all a rush. I don't need you to point it out. In a perfect world, I would have planned it a year in advance. The thing is, there were some last-minute cancellations, and it's really going to ruin things. Oh, a sudden cancellation. That's tough. Sometimes, no matter how much you plan, something unexpected is going to pop up. But if it's just one person, I'm sure you'll be able to find someone. How about the drama kids you were close with? Didn't you call yourselves the Quintet or something? Are they coming to your wedding? They are the girls who canceled. Do you remember Debbie? 
Yes, I remember her. She was the most popular girl in our grade. Well, Debbie's wedding is on the same day as mine. And the other three girls are going to Debbie's wedding, not mine. Really? Oh, yeah, that's rough. I get why you're upset. Right? Not to mention, I invited everyone three months ago. Debbie sent out her invites only two months before the wedding. I invited everyone first. But still, everyone said they're going to Debbie's wedding. Don't you think that's strange? Yeah, that's pretty inconsiderate. The other three girls, they sent in their RSVPs, right? They did. They all said they were coming. I even made sure to account for one of them having a peanut allergy. Now I'm going to have three empty seats if I can't find someone. Ugh, oh, look at me. I'm a mess. So that's why I really want you to come, Maria. You're the only one I can ask. I'm really counting on you. I really feel for you, Franny. I wish there was something I could do to help. I really can't come to your wedding. You guys were so close. Why did Debbie decide to have her wedding on the same day as yours? Usually friends don't hold weddings on the same day. Didn't you talk with one another about it beforehand? I also find it a little weird all three of those girls would ditch your wedding, even after they sent in their RSVPs saying they'd come. What do you mean? Are you saying that the other girls don't like me? I'm not saying that at all. It's just that, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but you're very aggressive when it comes to making sure you get what you want. I'm wondering if that had anything to do with why everyone suddenly bailed. Are you implying my aggressiveness caused this situation? I'm not aggressive. I'm just brutally honest. I'd rather you think of me as someone who isn't afraid to speak their mind. Well, there might be one reason I can think of. I asked them to buy me an expensive wedding present. I think they spent $500 per person. $500 per person? Isn't that a bit extravagant? Well, they asked me what I wanted. I put a lot of stuff on my wedding registry. But what I really wanted was the high-end stuff, so I asked them to get it all for me. Oh, I know it was expensive. But they aren't acquaintances. We've known each other since high school. Yeah, I think asking for super expensive wedding gifts may have been a little much. I personally would think twice about going to a wedding where the bride asked for a $500 wedding gift. You too, Maria. Well, everyone's pretty cheap. But you know, they asked me what I wanted, so I didn't think it made a difference if I asked for something a bit expensive. After all, it's a celebratory present. I didn't think I had to hold back from telling them what I really wanted. There's a time and a place for honesty. Even just going to a wedding can be expensive. Between hair, nails, makeup, and a dress, that's a few hundred dollars. If you throw in a $500 present on top of that, it's more than most people want to pay. You should have been a little more considerate. I don't know why I need to be considerate. They're my friends. Oh, but come to think of it, I never sent them a thank you letter. You haven't sent them a thank you letter? Well, I can't just send the letter. I need to send it with champagne or chocolates. Isn't it a waste of money to send all of that to all of them? But you aren't getting married to get new designer appliances or save money. Friendship isn't like that, Franny. Isn't that what friends are for, though? If you really think about it, what do I have to thank them for? It's not like we're strangers. We're friends. We're like family. There may be people who are okay with that, but they went out of their way to buy you something you wanted. Shouldn't you cherish friends like that? Ugh, isn't that a message in a Hallmark greeting card? Don't pretend to be so virtuous. Trust me, I'm not virtuous. It's just, they bought you a special, expensive present, and you can't even be bothered to say thank you? I can't really blame them for changing their minds about attending your wedding. Plus, we both know how nice Debbie is to everyone. If you're as good of friends as you say you are with them, I bet it was tough for them to decide not to come. I lost just because Debbie happens to be nicer than me? And because I asked them to get me something that was a measly $500? It really isn't that much. To be offended because I forgot to thank them for something of that price? Well, I guess if you look at it, 
Now I know who my true friends are. I don't need anyone in my life that's going to be so self-centered as them. I don't think that's the right way to look at things. I think that attitude is exactly why people are choosing not to come to your wedding. In that case, they don't have to. I don't need friends like that. You're free to think whatever you'd like. Well, anyway, like I said, I wish I could come. But if you ask me, $500 for a wedding present is outrageous. Oh, I see. I didn't realize you were on their side, Maria. I don't take sides. I look at the situation and decide for myself. And to be honest, we haven't talked to each other since high school. We were good friends back then, but it's been years since we've seen each other. Considering that, don't you think you're asking a lot? Common courtesy and being polite go a long way. You aren't coming to my wedding, so you don't have any right to say anything. I only invited you because I know you don't have any friends. I thought you'd be thrilled to come to my wedding. You lost your chance anyway. I don't even want you there. Thank you for your consideration. But you know, I actually am invited to a wedding. Are you dense? I just took back my generous offer to invite you to my wedding. I think you might be the dense one. I'm talking about Debbie's wedding. Debbie invited you too? But you said you're busy on Saturday meeting your fiancé's family. It's true, I am meeting my fiancé's family. But to be totally honest, I am meeting them on Sunday. I thought you would be hurt, so I lied to spare your feelings. But I don't care anymore. Why would you admit that? You made yourself look like an inconsiderate jerk. All of you are poor excuses of human beings. Lying is never good, I'll give you that. But like I said, is it my fault you invited me last minute? Debbie and I have kept in touch even after we graduated. Sure, you may take pride in your honesty, but I think it's done more harm than good for you. Debbie, on the other hand, is sincere and kind to everyone around her. Good luck with that whole brutally honest thing, though. Hope it works out for you. If I can give you one piece of advice, you should let go of your ego. Oh yeah, and maybe don't be so selfish, because asking $500 for a wedding gift is absolutely ridiculous. Sorry, just being brutally honest. <laughs> I can't believe you've been lying to me all this time. I will never invite you to anything ever again. Did I ask you to invite me? Don't fall off your high horse, Franny. Don't stress too hard about the empty seats. I'm sure the other guests won't be too surprised. Franny couldn't find anyone to replace the three girls who'd canceled. She really didn't want empty seats, so she hired actors to fill in. As a result, she was over budget, which did not please her husband. What was supposed to be the happiest day in her life became the worst. I really did feel bad she had those cancellations. I honestly would have gone to her wedding if I had known earlier and didn't already say yes to Debbie. But I couldn't stand the way she looked down on and treated her friends. At least she got some nice gifts. 